Does rising interest rates mean that a housing crash is on the way? This past week, we saw interest rates jump nearly a quarter percent because inflation came in way hotter than expected. And on top of that, we've got the Fed coming out saying that they're definitely gonna raise at least 75 basis points possibly even a hundred basis points while experts out there are saying that more price corrections are on the way so ever since spring we've seen affordability be affected because of rising interest rates it's stalled demand causing homes to sit on the market longer days on the market to build because of that we've started seeing home prices drop and because of that home price growth is slowing while many markets out there are seeing home prices pull back because sellers are having to reduce prices in order to get buyers interested in those properties. So how is the recent rise in interest rates going to affect housing? Is it gonna cause prices to crash? Now, in order to address how interest rates are going to impact housing, I wanna take a minute here and talk about how they've impacted pricing so far this year, what it's done to buyer demand, how it's affected that affordability so that we're on the same page. Maybe talk logically about it for just a moment here. So earlier in the year, we got inflation readings that were higher than expected. And the Fed got aggressive and started hiking the Fed funds rate a little bit higher than people thought they would so quickly. And I'll be the first to admit, I didn't think interest rates would go nearly as high as they are at the moment. I thought we would teeter out no higher than 4%. In fact, Fannie Mae, one of the biggest lenders out there, had their forecast sitting somewhere around 4%. So we were both on the same page and we were both wrong. And because inflation continued to rise, the Fed continued to get aggressive, there was a lot of volatility in the market, and we've seen interest rates continue to go up. And that rise in interest rates has continued to affect the housing market. If you've been out there looking, you know that the housing market has slowed. At the moment, the National Association of Realtors is forecasting somewhere around 4.85 million sales for the entire year of 2022. Last year, we sold over 6 million homes. So the lack of demand out there is actually affecting the number of homes selling, which is exactly what you would expect. But recently, we've seen inventory kind of teeter out, if you will, right? And we saw inventory continue to rise, partly because demand had backed off and partly because sellers were scared. Putting their homes on the market didn't wanna miss the peak in, in pricing and therefore putting their homes on the market. But since then, we've actually seen active inventory pull back. At the same time, newly listed properties have actually started to go down. So inventory is starting to drop in a lot of markets out there. And that's partly due to seasonality this time of year. But the other part of it is due to people just not wanting to sell their house, not being in a position to sell their house because of interest rates going up so much and home prices are still higher than where most of these people purchase their home. So in order to purchase something else, not only are they likely going to pay a higher price, they're going to pay a higher interest rate as well, which adds to that affordability play that we've been talking about here over the last couple of months. But my question to you, as somebody out there watching this video, likely a buyer or seller in the market or somebody just keeping up to date on the economy and, and everything real estate, what happens if interest rates continue to rise? I'd love to know your thoughts. Put it in the comments below because here's what I'm seeing in the market at the moment. We saw interest rates go up and as they started to peak around that six and a quarter percent back in June, we actually saw inventory start to level out a bit. People stopped putting their homes on the market for one reason or another. And my belief is that many of the people out there that would be potential sellers if rates were lower are no longer sellers. These people are somewhat locked into their property. It's almost a stalemate, if you will. They'd like to sell their property, but they're not willing to sell it at a huge discount and then go out and buy something more expensive at a higher rate. Therefore, they just stay put. And this is where I get a bit concerned as a real estate agent, somebody that's that sells real estate, is what happens? What happens if rates continue to go higher? Now, a couple of months back, I posted a video that I'll link to here where I talked about the high in interest rates being around six and a quarter percent. And I thought, again, that would be our peak. And we're sitting around that peak at the moment, but there's still a lot of volatility out there in the market. And the primary reason for that is because inflation has remained at highs. And you've heard me talk in other videos about how if the news comes in as what was expected, then the market takes it in stride and things tend to get better. Rates improve in those cases, right? So for those of you not familiar, the market was expecting 
inflation to actually drop by more than expected this past month. And the inflation numbers came in high. The CPI came in higher than expected. That created additional volatility in the market. And because of that, the market got scared and we saw interest rates jump nearly a quarter percent in just one day. And if you've been following the market for any period of time, you know that less than a month ago, rates were in the 4%. So we've seen interest rates go up quite a bit over just the last month alone. And this creates some concerns for me, not because the housing market is slowing and home prices are, are backing off, decelerating, you know, in some markets, maybe you're seeing some discounts on properties. That's not my concern because I know long-term housing is an asset. I know the benefits that it creates. But at the moment, my concern is the fact that if interest rates continue to go higher, that only locks more people into their property. If people weren't willing to sell their property when rates were in the mid fives, high fives, what makes you think that they're going to sell their property when it gets to six and a half, possibly even 7%? Now, I don't know that rates are going to go that high. In fact, if you would have asked me three months ago, I would have told you, I don't think there's any chance that that happens, but because there's so much volatility in the market, I'm starting to backtrack a little bit. And I've always said I would be completely transparent with you guys, and I'm not concerned about housing prices, and I'm not concerned about my job, if you will, but I am concerned about the future of housing if interest rates go up, because that only locks, again, more people into the property, which takes away from the inventory out there and creates more of a hurdle for first-time home buyers to get into the housing market. Now, you're always going to have people that need to sell. Maybe it's death, divorce, debt, whatever the reason, and those homes are going to come on the market. And if they have to sell, maybe it's a distressed situation and they have to drop the price in order to get out of that property. Well, that's one sell and that takes that home off the market. But what adds more inventory to the market? That's where I start to get confused because that's the only way people can buy houses. You need a willing seller on the other side. And if sellers aren't willing to put their properties on the market because they have a super low rate, because they're just fine where they are, maybe they don't love it, but maybe they also don't love the idea of going out and paying more for a property and paying a higher interest rate to do it. And therefore they just stay put. Well, that means there's no properties to choose from. now. Newly constructed properties, new construction, that's a little bit different animal. Those builders need to sell those properties in many cases. And those properties you might be able to see a bigger discount on. Maybe you see bigger discounts on those properties if the contractor is not getting people walking in the door. They're gonna offer incentives. They're gonna drop that price in order to get people in. But for existing homes out there, I don't really see a lot of changes happening in the market because it always comes back to supply and demand. You need more supply than you have demand in order for prices to really pull back. And even if that demand continues to draw back, supply isn't really building. So that means housing just, again, sits in a stalemate. Maybe moves sideways, maybe pulls back a little bit, but I don't see an opportunity for a crash because you have to have excess property in order for that to happen. Now, I know I'm going to have people comment on the video and say, employment, that's what's actually going to cause the next leg down. When people lose their jobs, the unemployment is going to rise. These people aren't going to be able to afford their houses. That's going to throw supply on the market and that's what's going to cause the next leg down in housing. Well, that's a possibility that people are going to lose their jobs. In fact, I think we're in a recession, heading for a recession. People are going to lose their jobs. We're currently sitting 3.7, 3.8% uh, unemployment. Now understand, in the crash, in the time of the crash, we were sitting double digit unemployment. I recently read an article that said in order to get inflation back down to 2%, that we need unemployment somewhere around 6.5%. Well, we're sitting at around 3.7%, like I mentioned a moment ago. So nowhere near the double digit unemployment that we had back during the great housing crash. And if all it takes is getting to 6.5% unemployment for inflation to get back to 2%, well, that would likely mean that the Fed was no longer adjusting the Fed funds rate. In fact, they would probably be back stimulating the economy with some sort of quantitative easing because of the recession that we would go into at that time which in turn would mean lower interest rates. So at the moment, I'm a bit confused in how all of this plays out. I realize there are problems with the economy, but at the same time, I'm a logical thinker, a logical person, and I understand how the housing market right now is fundamentally different than it was back during the last housing crash and how the foundation we're on from a housing market perspective is way stronger. Now that's not to say that we can't see home prices pull back in some markets because I do believe we will, but I don't believe a housing crash is on the way. Now, over the next couple of weeks, you could see higher interest rates. 
which in turn is going to continue to slow housing, less houses are going to sell, which in turn could mean that you see less homes come into the market, even some price drops in your area. But if you're a homeowner out there and you have that longer term time horizon that we've talked about and you bought for the right reasons, then I think you're in good shape.